So welcome everyone to Zoom. What an amazing place this is to meet her this morning. I, I did some work with students at Suffolk New College uh, and I brought in uh, a research researcher from Finland into this Zoom meeting and it was amazing. It was so valuable. So there's so much potential and as musicians, uh, I haven't actually asked you, asked you to introduce yourselves, but I will do after the presentation and you can tell me what your challenges are and we can discuss that as a group later. Um, so uh, first of all, I'm going to say a fundamental thing. There are two ways of um, interacting inside Zoom. There's this thing called speaker view where the person who's speaking fills the screen like hopefully I am doing now for you. Hopefully you see everyone else is in a film strip, probably at the top. Um, but you might prefer a different view. And the different view is if you go to the top right hand corner, you can see gallery view. So if you click that now. And gallery view is good. I can see now all, all of us, so as six or seven of us, I can see in one um, view. But do you know, inside a Zoom meeting, you can have 100 people. Uh, and I believe it's 25 little tiles per page. So that, that's important, speaker view, gallery view. So I'm going to go back to speaker view. But as I'm speaking, you could decide I wonder what um, George is doing there now. I'm just going to double click George, or it might be someone else, just double click him. <laughs> and um, you can see that he will fill the screen in speaker view. And then if you want to, you can unpin him and then it will go back to me. It'll go back to the person who's speaking. So you have control. So if you had a student, let's say you were teaching a group of a number of people, not just one to one. Um, you had like quite a few people or you were performing or you, you just wanted to see what somebody was doing just double click on their video and you can um, see. So those are the two key views. The other thing uh, is that the bottom certainly on PCs and Macs, iPad it is slightly different. I'm just going to ask George to tell me where this strip of icons is. So George on the iPad is it on the right or the left? Hang like on, which are, are the icons of like the chat and mute and whatnot? They're, acro they're across the strip uh, on the top. If I touch the screen, okay. and they appear across the top horizontally. Excellent. Hello, Arnold. Do we do anything? That's great. So we have a little instruction there from George. I'm putting you on mute again now. So um, for most of us, though, all of the icons are on the bottom. And we'll just take a look at them. So you can mute yourself. I'm not going to mute myself, but what I can do is I can take the video off. So I'm going to just touch my stop video and then you can just see an image of me there. So, you know, it might be some time when you do want to go off camera for whatever reason. Perhaps you're drinking a, uh, a bottle of beer or something. <laughs> I don't know what you might be doing. It's Friday afternoon after all. But there we are. So that's something you can do. And that image is an image that you can upload. So it could be you, you know, performing your band. It could be anything. You can choose what image you want to display. It never fills the full screen, though, unfortunately. It would be nice. It's, it's quite a small image. Uh, but yes. And when you invite people, when they're waiting to join you, you can have that. That image will appear. So you could brand it up with saying, please wait, coming soon. You could put some text on top of it, of course, couldn't you, to reassure people. So there's the mute, there's the stop video. Then, now you might not have all of these, but I do believe that you have the invite button because I think I've made it possible. Please, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see the invite button? Yeah, and um, we're going to talk about how to invite people to join you in a moment but I'm just going to swing along to show you all the other bits and pieces. Now I have a bit more control here because I'm the host. I have managed participants whereas you will have just participants but if you click um, that uh, participants button 
You can see everyone showing in a list um, there. And I've added some icons, many, many settings that we're going to go through, many, many settings. And um, when I, and probably when you run your own Zoom meetings, you won't have these because you have to enable them. But you know, if I was speaking so quickly and you were thinking, gosh, she's so fast, you could say, go slower. Did you see that? Or go faster. Or there's a little more button and you might want to say, I need a break. See if you can find that cup of coffee. See that? It might be harder to find for you, George, on the iPad. I don't know. I'm going to hope that you can find it. It's under participants and then there's a whole string. So if you can find it, oh, three of you are saying they want a break. One says yes. All right, some of you have found it. Okay, <laughs> go faster. Whoa, whoa. All right, <laughs> I don't know who said that, but there we go. So you could imagine, couldn't you, if you had a classroom, you know, you might give um, your pupils an opportunity um, or learners an opportunity to interact in this way, or you might steer well clear of it. And this might never be a feature you ever use. I'm showing you, you know, a lot of what's available. We'll discuss later, you know, which you think is valuable. OK, so that's participants. So at my end here, I can unmute you all in one fell swoop by clicking the unmute. Uh, I can mute you all, so I have a lot of control here. I can kick people out as well, by the way, if um, any of you, um, you know, decided to say something that was not quite appropriate, I would have the, the opportunity to um, um, kick you out, basically. Right, so that's participants. So we've already talked about the chat. And George has found the chat. You can toggle it on and off, click it on off. Private messaging, public messaging. You can attach documents, you can send files, you can send music. Um, so that's all possible within the Zoom chat. And the other good thing about it is that you can save it. You can save the chat and um, have it available as a text file if you wanted to go over it again. Ellen, yeah. Can you show me how to send files? Yeah, sure. Oh, I've got I've got to the meeting late because I'm always late to things. But uh, I got oh. a punk on my bicycle and and the dog at my homework. <laughs> oh my word! Okay, I believe you. Welcome, Arnie. Welcome. Um, so I'm a bit worried about your friend, Arnie. It doesn't look well. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> He's background. had the virus, you know. <laughs> wow. There's quite a few of us. Well, not I've just got a skeleton staff working at the moment. Skeleton <laughs> staff. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Pretty good. So, so Arnie, do you know what? The only thing you've really missed uh, is this your first time in Zoom? No, I, I used it yesterday actually. Oh right. So you give a lesson. <laughs> it was very good. Brilliant. So you know about the key thing. You know about the fact that we've got the speaker view where you see me main yes. screen top right hand corner gallery view where you can see everyone little thumbnails little videos yes okay good so those are important those those two views i'm coming back to tell you about sharing files one moment um so um yeah so we were just talking about as well how you can hide your video you can stop your video if you don't want people to see you having a swig of your coffee or whatever and then you can come back so you have all of those controls there you can invite people on the fly. I'm going to talk to you about how to invite people officially in a little while, but you can always, if you think, oh my gosh, somebody needs to be in here right now, then you can literally hit the invite button and, and invite them in. Um, so sending files then, mm. Arnie. So you found the chat. So I am yes. now going to, let's just yeah. have a look to George, to everyone. I'm going to find a file. What's it going to be? Oh, I'm going to just come to my Dropbox and see if I can find something that might be appropriate. Um, oh, gosh, I don't know. It's so easy to attach them, but I've got to find out what would be useful to send to you. Not that. Let's just have a look. So the options are Dropbox, your computer. So, sorry, where do, you, where do you find this? Okay, see the chat? Yeah. 
um, there. I'm going to send you this terrible picture that my um, student sent me okay. this morning. I've sent it to you now. So in chat, you can yeah. see where it says file, there's three little dots. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then following, so you've sent that to, to everyone. I have. So how would I send a file to you? Okay, so instead of where it says to and everyone as a drop down, find me and then you can um, send it to me. Oh, so send chat. But how, how do you actually upload the file onto the chat? Do you just drag it in? or? No, I, I, I literally um, clicked file and then when you click the word file, it says, do you want to take the file from your Dropbox, from Google Drive, or literally from a file on your computer? Right, so where do you find the word file? Sorry, no, that's absolutely fine. I'm here to help. Right, uh, right. Send me a little message, please. Will you send me a little okay. message? I'll send you a message right now. Good. Find you there. We are. Now, who has, in actual fact, shared this? Oh, I see. Yeah, I've got it now. There we are. File, file. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. 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 Great. Right. So you can all send now. You can all send uh, files to individuals or mm -hmm. uh, um, to the whole group. And it could be absolutely anything you've got on your computer. Ooh. Yeah. All right, then. What, what else? What else? Well, what you might have missed is that I'm actually recording this, Arnie, so that um, you'll be able to play it back again. So anything that's any lesson that you, you have can be recorded and can be, um, you know, um, sent out to whoever. Right. And how lovely to see Enrico in the jungle. Now you can have virtual backgrounds. I almost feel at this stage that um, I, I want to um, show you that. So you can have a little bit of fun and Joanne. Yes, do that. My, my favourite one. Right, so where it says stop video, there's a little carrot. Mm -hmm. Click that and then you can choose a virtual background. And I have to say, a couple of months ago I was in Thailand and I feel like I'm there again. Uh. Yes. I'll need to update my iOS to do this. Yeah. Mm. But you know, potentially you could have a, the stage, you could have an orchestra behind you, you could have your band, you could have any of your photographs behind you. You could even have a skeleton behind you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need anything fancy, do you? You've got, got enough there going on. Yeah. And then, so it's, it's literally um, a little carrot choose virtual background and of course you need to be able to take it off so I'm going back to none um, but you could upload your own background okay sorry I couldn't find that this carrot that you're talking about where who was that was just saying that who, who was that Derek Derek, oh, Derek Derek okay Derek right. You've gone off the video now so right. um, basically can you see the stop video button to the right of that is like a, 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 a sort of top of a triangle, top of a roof. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is the button. And it shows you the camera, video settings. And the other option is choose virtual background. Okay. So I'm going to come on now to the proper PowerPoint presentation because. Um, the only other thing along the bottom there is uh, reactions. So you can give me a thumbs up if you want. I'll be very happy. You can give me, you can clap if you want. Thank you, Father. You're both spontaneously. Uh, yeah. Enrico's going old school. He's giving that kind of clap. Just take a look. There's reactions on the bottom. A reactions button where you can kind of use one of the. There are only two though, aren't there? Yeah. Well, you know, it's all positive stuff around right here. <laughs> No, neg no thumbs down, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, they might add those. Who knows? Okay, don't know. So, um, now sharing your screen is really good for presentations like this. I am going to show you all the options available. Um, and um, um, first of all, I'm just going to get my PowerPoint lined up, lined up perfectly. So, when I hit the share screen, it actually gives me options of, um, you know, the main, I've got two screens here, so I'm lucky. My PowerPoint screen. If I had an iPhone or an iPad, I could actually connect it to that. And I 
be able to show you. But I'm a Samsung gal, so I haven't got that. But anyway, let's get on with the presentation. So sharing my screen. So what you see now is little thumbnails of us all and filling speak of you is my PowerPoint. Sorry, can I just ask a question? Go for it, yes. I have, I have two screens up at the moment and I can't get them to disappear. I've got the one uh, with the, um, where you select your background. I'm now in space. Yes, but you're in space, yes. I can't actually get, I've got two, two um, menus up and I can't get them to disappear. Um, okay then, okay then. So, um, so you, you've got other things overlapping your background with space behind you? Um, no, no, on the main page where you are. I've mm. got um, uh, the, the page up with general video, audio, share screen down to um, virtual background and beyond. Okay. Um, Tell you what, did you, did you click share screen? I wonder if you click that because you it's might possible. click that again, then click it, click off it. You might you might need a little there's a little red button that says stop sharing so maybe it's no bad. no it's just telling me that I cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing ah right okay okay I've got you so yeah that's so it's enabled I clicked, I clicked the little button next to stop video originally I think okay um, so I stopped sharing my screen for you Dave because I think the way I've got mine set up is that I've not allowed anyone else to screen share at the same time. So right. hopefully that little That's dialog fine. box is gone now, has it? No, it's still there at the moment. Okay. If I click that button again, it might. Yeah, try it. Um, Toggle on and off option is always a good one. Um, yeah. Maybe the other thing you can do is stop your video. And yeah, I've tried that. that, it's still there. <laughs> try that. Can you, move, can you move your window? Oh, hang on. That's it. I've just worked it out. If I move the window with our faces in it, I, there's a little red, red thing. Uh, that's Brilliant. it. Now, thank you. Sorry about that. Brilliant. No, not a problem. So I'm back to share screen. With all the different screens I can possibly share, including my iPad if I had one. But I'm just going to the PowerPoint window, right. and I will now go through this with you. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have this, you know, experimental freestyle ask questions okay so let's just go through this now so that that gives you an idea that's a screen grab because sometimes you can't see everything when you're inside um, a zoom meeting uh, and, and certainly when the recording is available it strips out all of, a lot of these things but you know um, let, let's just take a look all of the um, icons are at the bottom, like we were just talking about, mute, stop video, the little carrots, the invite, um, participants, etc. cetera, um, screen share, chat, record and reactions. So, uh, and when you click participants, then you'll see a list of everyone and you can see who is the host. Uh, and if you're the organizer, you know, you can mute people and then mute them. You have all of those controls there. So uh, I just wanted to include that when you, if you ever listen again to the video, you can see all these options. And then there's the two views. You've got the gallery view, only three people in that gallery view there. Um, but like you say, you can have 25, I think it is. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, 10, 25 in, in that view where they're all together. Um, all of them muted. If you are going to be doing a session with lots of people, you want to make sure when they all come in, they're muted because it's pandemonium. You know, and I don't know what class sizes or how many people you teach at once, but you know, to be able to control it, make it very professional, you want it people muted. Um, so, starting Zoom meetings, right? This is important to understand. Uh, there's two ways you can literally schedule a meeting like I've got there like I scheduled this meeting a couple of days ago uh, and it will just stay in your in your like calendar and you can put the time and whatever or you could just decide I'm going to just run a meeting right now I'm just going to click the 
new meeting or you know you could go and join someone else's meeting particularly if you know their meeting id everyone that has a zoom account has a meeting id so you know if you were to hit the schedule um oh actually this is not exactly following on um what this is this is going to this little button at the top here this can often throw people it's the settings button where there's lots of choices you know to get, set up your zoom as you want it you need to be going into the settings because there's so many different settings and I, i'm going to try and go through a few of them but i might miss some of them but we'll do our best so that's my zoom profile you can see that's my meeting id so the meeting you joined today had that number in it um, and um, at the moment i'm using that all the time to make it easier but going forward when more and more people know that meeting id i might change it i might have to kind of make it more of a um, password on it because people could just randomly join i'm surprised no one has actually but that could be very risky couldn't it if people knew your meeting number and they just popped in i popped into your class this morning did you if i clicked on the link thinking oh i'll just go and get the computer set up and you were teaching some other people so i kind of popped in and pop out, popped out again yeah see that's the thing that's the thing thank you joanna <laughs> because i think i'm gonna have to uh, do something different I, i'm literally you know this is like for me i mean i've always been into um video conferencing and i used to use google hangouts about five years ago to run kind of virtual field trips with children across america it was amazing and i did it from my home office here in ipswich and um you know but then i haven't done anything like this for years and so now it, you know this is all kind of kicked off because everyone wants to know how to use it but um yeah so uh, so you can see where this is now it's obviously a powerpoint screen grab but it's actually the Zoom browser, the Zoom website. All of you have downloaded Zoom and you've got a little Zoom app somewhere. But for all of the hundreds and thousands of settings, it will take you to the Zoom um, online website. Okay. Um, what else? Right. So if I was to say to you, invite a friend now. In fact, you can do it as I, as, as I talk you through this. So if you were to hit the invite, you would see this uh, window popping up. You would see an option to copy the URL or copy the invitation. Can everyone see that? Thumbs up if you can. Yes. Yeah, great. Okay, so um, you know the easiest, the very easiest way, if you want to quickly get people into a meeting, copy the URL, which is just a link, that link that you had, and drop it into Facebook Messenger, say, or drop it into a text, or drop it into wherever. This is so quick, drop it into um, a Google um, you know, chat hangout or whatever, you know. Or the other option is to copy the invitation. Uh, and when you hit copy invitation, it takes you to this dialogue box where, you know, it will, um, open up your default email or it might open up Gmail, whatever you use. Um, and it looks like this and it, you can just drop it into an email. So it's a bit more official, really having a smart email, which you could then potentially customize with your signature on the bottom. To be honest, there's a lot of that you don't need, like all of that tap on a mobile dial by your location. I think uh, it's an American product and basically some people connect rather than by the computer audio they they phone in but we don't in the uk we just literally use our computer um so you you know that's why that is a little bit too long-winded but then that's the two options copy url copy invitation right what else what else now why did i include this i suppose because here you can see um at the top my zoom meeting id um you can see uh, if you want to leave the meeting you can i have on my end end meeting I, and if i end meeting i have to make one of you a host to keep it open otherwise if i end meeting i kick you all out but you know, you know, you could actually give the meeting to someone else. Oh, and I've got to say, Zoom is free. 
for 40 minute lessons, but you can have 100 people joining you. Um, if you want to be longer than 40, then there is a, uh, you'd have to have the paid account. You can do, um, you can do um, uh, one to ones. Oh, gosh. Yeah, Arnie, that is so right. Thank you for clarifying that. You can have as many one to one meetings as you want. But as soon as that third person joins, the clock starts ticking, and then you've got, you know, 40 minutes. But you're right. Thank you. Yeah, this is, this is. Um, and you can just restart a meeting, can't you? Like, yeah. if and you imagine, imagine, you, you know what your number is, they know what your number is, there's no faffing around, so you just say, we're putting on pause, come back. So there's ways around it. Yeah. I guess it would be a bit fiddly or a bit messy if you were actually, you know, recording. You'd have to stop recording, record again. So that's the only implication. So if it's one to one, is it mm -hmm. still a limit of 40 minutes or you can, or can you have as long as you like? As long as you can keep going for, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there we are. So um, yeah, and, and inside um, Zoom, you probably see, well, I don't know if you will see it, but there's a little icon, a little like exclamation mark. And when you click it, it just gives you some more information about your Zoom meeting and another way to copy the URL. So it, it is very user friendly. Um, now I mentioned to you, didn't I, about the settings? Yeah. Um, all kinds of little settings here from general settings um which ones do i like i like this one i've got this one ticked on my own uh, zoom meetings now automatically copy invitation url once the meeting starts so i've all automatically got that on the clipboard that is so useful that's a useful one show my connected time useful if you're counting down the 40 minutes Skin reaction tone, not at all useful. <laughs> I've got no idea why they've included that, but you know, it's in there. And um, you know, then you've got um, um, settings for your video, your audio settings for your uh, shared screen, for your chat. And you know, I think I'll be open to questions on this rather than if I go through each of them, you'll be a bit bored. Um, so yeah, so there's an automatic background there. Uh, and so that's what you know it can look like if you're not on an iPad. It'd be really interesting to see what it looks like from an iPad point of view, um, which I know George is on an iPad. We ought to really get him to share his screen with us, shouldn't we? Are you up for that, George, later? Be thinking about that. <laughs> be thinking about that, George, right there. All right, be thinking. Um, so anyway, there's that uh and tried. oh you tried did you oh hang on no sorry it's all do you try, carry try, on i'm nearly i'll be with you I'll, yeah I'll, try I'll, later I'll don't, don't, don't feel like you're under too much pressure you might miss some of the content maybe later you'll have a go at that um so i've already shown you these little um dialogue boxes when you click participants you see the list of everyone's names and why don't you do that go and have a look at the names and then you know, there's the mute and mute, and then there's the more button. Um, have a look, see what you get when you click more. Um, if you're a, a host like me, I can give you the opportunity to become a co-host. I could actually rename you. They do give you this option to rename. I'm not sure I'd give that. If I had young students and I was teaching them, I think I might remove that. <laughs> They, one of my groups this morning, they had renamed themselves. And Ben Dover was this guy's name. It wasn't funny. <laughs> anyway, um, so there we go. So lots of settings, as you can see. Now, um, you know, when I, I said I'm going to share my screen with you, this is interesting. I can actually share PowerPoint, which is what I'm doing. I can actually share just computer sound. You know, I can just share, you know, let's say I've recorded some music. I could just share that. Or I could share a video. So there's lots of things that you can do. Uh, sharing computer sound, like my Zumba teacher, that's what she had to do. And it's clicking the advanced button. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to make sure we all have time to try things out. It might get a bit pandemonium, but we'll, we'll make sure that happens. 
Uh, and just to give you an idea of how it is possible, have we got a few minutes? Can I just share with you this wonderfully grainy old clip from YouTube? Oh, anyway, so there is that. I mean, that uh, it was a bit grainy, a bit laggy, but you know, there's a potential for you to show videos within Zoom. So people who are having um, watch parties, I think I'm going to do a watch party tonight with some friends who are really into Peaky Blinders. So, um, you know, this I'll probably will do it. Um, so um, let's question have a look. Then. Yes, question. question. Uh, just there, the, the actual uh, audio uh, coming through was uh, very poor. Yeah. Is there any way know, to improve that? Do you know what? Or is that do you know what, Enrico? Do you know what? I think I I don't think I did this before I actually um, right. Um, so it. So, see it, that can, it can improve from yeah. there. Yeah, there is this little tick which I don't think yeah. I did just now. Share computer sound for a tick in there. Okay. Uh, 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 sure. You know, yeah. And I, I don't think yeah. I I did that to be honest, and I don't oh, think okay. it was defaulted. So I think that was my my issue there. But um, you know, there's you know when you think about it, when you've got a lot of people, it's it's probably it's it's quite hard, isn't it? There's so much going yeah, on, absolutely. and it depends on people's internet as well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. So the other thing, um, like I mentioned to you, you can record the screen now if you are on a paid account of Zoom then um, it will record it and put it up in the cloud so it doesn't clog up your computer. But if you haven't got a paid account, it will save it to your computer. What you would then have to do is probably wrap it up and put it into something like Dropbox or Google Drive so that you could share it with others. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, that's my final slide, which I came across just now. I thought it was quite good. <laughs> uh, right, so... That is the um, the PowerPoint. Let me stop sharing. And um, okay, so now I think what we need to do because that's the input. I, I almost feel like I want to help to answer any personal questions and also talk about how you can charge people. You know, monetizing it. Shall I just just show you what one of my contacts is doing? Would that be helpful first? Right. Now it's not automated because, like, to get it automated, you know, you'd have to. Well, I don't know. I have. There's bound to be a way of getting automated payments. Um, I'd have to kind of study that. But um, what my singing teacher is doing right now, uh, and then you can share your practices because some of you, I think, are already um, you know, up, up to speed with this. But anyway, so. Um, her email that came out yesterday. Let, oh, I'm going to have to share my screen again with you. Sorry for being a bit bitty. Um, right. So I had an email from her a couple of days ago. There it is. Um, it's about this virtual class. It's going to be six sessions starting tomorrow. Eight pounds or pay what you can. You can um, click by... Um, bank transfer to contact her or PayPal, click here. And this opens up this pay me, uh, paypal.me, uh, where you can put in what you want. And it literally just um, goes to her account. And I've got my own like this. I've just, I haven't used it before, but I've, it's easy to set up. So I put my own picture in there, my own icon. Um, so I've got mine set up as well. So that is uh, paypal.me um, and she is using Zoom because there's her Zoom link and there is her Zoom. Now that might be a little security issue there. I don't know. I don't know if she's got a password on that or whether that's unique. Do you know what we were saying? Like, cause Joanne, Joanna, you joined me today, didn't you? Might have to check, check with her about that. So she's saying, come in quarter past 10 on Saturday. She normally in her real face-to-face -face classes has about 20 people. So it'll be interesting to see who shows up for that. 
I think when you um, when you set up schedule a meeting, it gives you the option to put a password, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. So maybe let's hope she's got one on there. Um, so how about everyone here now? What what? Let, let's can you go through and introduce yourselves? Because I, I should have done that from the outset and I rushed straight in. So let's start. Joanna, with you first of all, um, tell me what, what you know what your involvement is and how you think we might be able to use Zoom. And if you've got any questions, I can be writing them down to make sure I answer them. All. Okay, so I'm Joanna. Most people know me. I don't think I've met Dave, but um, I'm Joanna Eden, and I'm a singer and I teach singing. I've got choir. I've got an, a group, an individual singing group. Who they all sing solo, and I teach one to one. So okay. I've so far i've done in one-to-one -one lessons and i've done uh, a, my singing group where i actually managed to accompany somebody when they were singing but you have to really uh, as far as I, i've managed to get my garage band piano and mic through on a shared screen i've got right. the audio coming from garage band so i have a decent piano sound not that kind of tinny sound that you get when you put it through a mic so somebody else might have an even better way because I do that on on share screen and I go to my garage band window so garage band is um, like an app is it for yeah you? like a mixer type of app whatever and then you uh, and then you put share audio computer audio for that window and it mm. uses the sound but right. there's a whole selection of settings that need to be right for, like in audio my, my Mac um, preferences my garage band preferences and the preferences on zoom have all got to be i found it through trial and error and i'm other people here might have a better way but i do when i'm accompanying somebody they're singing like a bar behind me so i have to stick mentally on it and i can barely hear them so it's not really that good but if anybody's got any or if you know any better way to to oh. get the audio i know the time delay is pretty much impossible so Oh, um, there yeah. will be no choir singing because I have tried with my solo singing group. We did a session on my solo group and we all tried to sing Let It Be together. And it was, well, it was quite nightmarish. It was like, it was the worst. I mean, it was awful. So uh, <laughs> that's not an option. And I think even Gareth Malone is struggling to make that happen. He's going to try and do a choir. But, but if anybody knows anything different, but because of the time oh. delay, Mm, but yeah. I'm thinking about doing a choir where I just have a sing song and they're all on mute. Yeah, yeah, they sing along, but yeah, it's like a sing yeah. song, well, more than yeah, a choir, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, you could get them. Well, they could record their own screen as well, couldn't they? Record their own sound. Um, yeah, and I think Rotterdam, loads of places, places are doing it where they record themselves and then somebody has to sit and mix it all together and get it all in sync. And you can actually come up with a beautiful ensemble sound but wow. they have to do a lot of post editing yes because of the delay okay thanks joanna that's great well we'll go along and introduce everyone uh for my benefit and then we'll come back to you know your your issues if anyone's got any other um ideas okay enrico elaine thank you hi just let me say thank you very much for putting this on it's uh, uh very informative uh i'm rico uh rico for sure it's, it's much easier trumpet player um, who's suddenly out of work like the rest of us on. Um, I don't do any teaching yet, but this could be a great way of, of to, uh, you know, I've done teaching in the past, but not, not for a while. So this could be a good way of, of um, you know, uh, for, the, for the upcoming months. Um, it's, um, it's new to me, you know, mm -hmm. okay, I've done, I've, I've done Skype and, and uh, FaceTime before but but this is great and it's um, I think it's a great tool although limited application for musicians playing together online this is our big this is our big problem that everyone's finding I think and maybe Derek uh, has got more ideas on what we should be no because <laughs> he because that's his <laughs> that's half his job <laughs> um, but anyway, you know that's the um, so maybe I'll, some of the some of you as you as we pass down can comment more on that. So. Okay, yeah. thank you, Rico. Thank you, lovely. Where are you from, by the way? I'm from Leeds in Yorkshire. Okay, 
And uh, Joanna, where are you yeah. from? Uh, from South and Walden, near Cambridge. Okay. Although right. I, I do live in London. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. okay. Right, uh, next long iPad man. <laughs> George. Oh, like this, like this. Is that me? Yes. I'm oh, muted. Yes. I used to be a drummer and now I'm a professional alcoholic and chess player. Um, <laughs> and that's how it's going. But um, I think this is useful. I don't think we can play really sort of, we can't play at the same time as each other. And we can't accompany, if we have students, we can't accompany them. But, you know, the whole online tuition thing is a different experience anyway you know it's more about evaluating a student's performance or what they're doing or, you know there's other ways to do that it's not just zoom is it you know you can do it on facetime or whatsapp or whatever but it's just this, this is very very useful and as rico said thank you very much for taking us through it it's very kind of you to take the time and show us and it's very very helpful so i'm sure there'll be lots one thing i'd like to know actually is how you record it as you go yes effortless there's a little button that is um you probably haven't got it because you're not a host but if you so after this meeting yeah. i recommend you all do you get in set up a zoom invite a few people in have a little play around with it and really test it out it, there is literally a button on on the bottom yours will probably be on the top when you're the host yeah. you just hit record and it will just record it to your computer now one thing i will say when I first started to use it, I thought, oh, I, I've stopped recording because I just want to have a chat to finish off. And I didn't know where it was. I didn't even know if it had recorded and it was really worrying. But it only renders the video when you close out of the meeting. As soon as you close out of the meeting, it then starts to prepare the video. Okay, so I'll just warn you on that. If you think, oh, it didn't record for me. It does when you close it. Close the meeting. Okay, yep, right. Okay then. So, George, whereabouts are you in in this? Uh, oh, I'm I'm just up the road from you. I'm in Hadley in Suffolk. Oh, there we are. There we are. Excellent. Okay, out of space. I think you're fifty thousand miles outside the solar system, aren't you? Or somewhere? No, no I'm dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I changed my name. I'm I'm in SE nine, South East London, in Eltham. Okay. So I'm nowhere near Jupiter at all. <laughs> um, I'm totally new to all this, um, but uh, again, I'd like to thank you as well because this has been very informative and interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I've been looking at ways to um, to teach online, and this seems like a very good option. Also, um, I'm a keyboard player, and I dabble in various other things, but I mainly do piano and keyboards. Um, and I work for a dance company who they're an inclusive dance company in Bromley called Magpie Dance. And I think they're thinking of trying to somehow do their dance classes through Zoom. Um, and they want us to accompany on Zoom. Whether that's going to be possible, I don't know. But I was very interested in what Joanna had to say because um, I'm, I will be a complete beginner. So. Um, I, I do have garage band and logic and stuff like that, so I'm, I may be able to uh, get up a piano sound and uh, play some music for them. Right. Uh, right. I could actually do it acoustically. Um, I, I did play a little bit in our VUB last night, our, our virtual pub. Um, I started on the piano, but they couldn't see me, so I, I recently got hold of a, a melodica. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those. Is that the one you blow down? You can blow down it, or there's a tube. Mine's got a tube, so you can actually blow down the tube, and then you can you can show the keyboard on the on the video, which is quite nice. Um, and we had a few laughs with that, but uh, yeah, it's great. I think what you're doing is fantastic, and uh, it's it's really going to help. I think. Oh, great! Well, yeah. maybe you could hook up with Joanna about all those settings for Garage Band. And yeah, I've made a note of all the preferences that, that I've got to look at to try and sort that out. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks. So I don't know whether to. I think Derek. I don't know whether to do Derek or Arnie. You've swapped around on my panel. Uh, go on, Derek. Flying plane, Derek. <laughs> okay, um, Derek, saxophone player. 
owner. Um, looking at the lovely way. That, out of interest, Dave, because I invited Dave, you may not know Dave, but Dave and I have played together many times and I said this was happening and would you mind if he joined in even though he wasn't part of the inclusive group? So welcome. If, if I go and play my acoustic piano, which is right next to me here, I just... Yeah. It's a quick test. How horrible does it sound? I don't know. It's 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 Derek, don't tell me. So, is that awful? It sounds yeah, beautiful to me. It sounds fine. Do so, try that? Should that we sing along? Speech? Shall we Do sing that? along with you? <laughs> I mean, if we were just showing someone a pupil and you wanted to play a line and went... So that's perfectly good enough to hear, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I, I did uh, yeah. Happy Birthday and Bohemian Rhapsody last night, and it, 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 it worked okay. okay. But as Joanna cool. said, everybody was singing at different times, so it was, it was weird, but because we'd all had a couple of drinks, it kind of worked. Okay. I, I mean, obviously the sinking thing. I saw a thing yesterday, which was the best sinking thing I've ever seen, um, and it was um, oh God, Tim Garland and Jason Ribello. But the way I think it was done was with some kind of MIDI keyboard that Jason had. And I think it was a very, very expensive Synclavia acoustic piano that Tim Garland had. And the MIDI was playing the piano physically in the same room that Tim Garland was in. But it sounded wow. fantastic. Mm. So oh, I don't okay. know whether there's a cheap method of doing that. I presume the only way is to have a piano that has magnets and that kind of thing. So it's probably a ridiculously expensive way of doing it, but that was a live thing between piano and saxophone player that was recorded. And it's worth going to listen to because it was just amazing musically as well. It was one of the nicest things I've seen put together. Mm. Um, so that's the only thing I've seen this week of total synchronous um, two people in two different rooms. And it's a so did, one of them, did one of them have the piano coming out of a speaker in their room and they were playing along to it and that's what we could well hear. I think it was actually a real grand piano that was being played by magnets like a player piano yeah the old days of player piano but actually being done by Jason Ribello playing a midi keyboard in his in his lounge in Bath mm. but it was going it was coming through. out of Tim Garland's house but it was the real piano in Tim Garland's house that was making the noise that he was joining in with wow yeah, yeah that is posh that was posh but it was very good um, yeah. and, and it's, it's a future and one that none of us can afford at the moment. Um, so, I mean, my, my interest with all of this, and thank you very much for setting this up, um, is I've suddenly been noticing people doing all of this and thought, oh my Lord, there's yet more technology that I don't know anything about. So let's find about it for social reasons. Let's find about, I don't do much teaching on a one-to-one -one basis, although I have had a couple of requests over the last week. And considering I've got nothing else on, I'm very happy to try it this way. And I think I could do this as someone with a saxophone around the neck because I can just play it and then they can just play it and I can listen to them perform it. Obviously, you haven't got the sound, but I think this would work on a one to one teaching basis. And obviously, uh, you've tried this, Chris, yeah? Right, okay. So, yeah, I, I'm just going to watch and find out. And, uh, and, and How just, much are you going to charge, Derek? How much? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, of course. It's it on Ladyface that I'm trying to play. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> well, it's good. It's, I mean, everyone seems to be doing this pay what you can afford. And if you're a musician that hasn't got any money at the moment, then we respect that. As much as anything else, it's just nice to keep in touch with people and, and find out what's going on. And I don't know what's going to happen over the next month or so. But it's going to start biting in a month's time or so, isn't it? Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, Arnie, um, would you like to um, do your intro, please? Hello, folks. Uh, I think I know you all except uh, for Dave. Hello, Dave. Hi, good to meet you. Hi. Is it Ellen or Elaine? Elaine. Elaine, okay. Um, I did four lessons yesterday. I used, because uh, I teach at Birmingham Conservatoire, and they've asked us to keep teaching one-to-ones online. So I did four lessons and I used Zoom for one of them and Skype for two of them and then was forced to use WhatsApp on the phone for the other one. Uh, and the Zoom was by far the best platform to do it. Uh, just one little piece of information that you might find useful. 
is if you go to the set preferences on, on the drop down menu at the top. Um, so you go to zoom zoom.us and then select preferences. You can uh, change the microphone. So you don't have to use the built in mic. If you go down, you'll see audio on the left hand side. Uh, so you can plug in your sound card or whatever, or if you've got a USB mic, you know, but if you've got a sound card, you can plug in your sound card and you can use a different mic, you can use an external mic. So what I've been doing with my bass students is using a better mic and they're wearing headphones and then the audio quality is a lot better. Where was that, Arnie? Right, so you go to zoom.us on the, uh, at the top of the screen on the left hand side near the Apple sign, select the drop down menu. And then you can see preferences. I'll bring my screen up now for you to see it. Yeah. So you go to preferences and then down on the left hand side of that window, you can see um, uh, audio, you select audio. I think I've annoyed yeah. Poppy. <laughs> uh, you select audio and then you can, if you've put your sound card in there, plug your sound card in, or your USB mic, you can change mic. Yeah. You can do that as well at the bottom where you've got yeah. your mute thing. You right. can do that. You can do it there where there's a little arrow. You, you can choose your. If uh, you've already yes. plugged it in, so it, you know that little arrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you um, can also, you can test the, test the microphone, see if it's working. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And then if the, if the students wear, if you're both wearing headphones, you can actually get you know because I'm, I'm talking about bass, so it's a, a lot of it's acoustic. Sound, the sound of it, you know, mm. and uh, you can check out their sound and then check out your sound. And so yeah. it's, that works quite well. That sounds great. I mean, you can plug in. I, I mean, this is what I use. I, I've got an external camera. It's not a great microphone, to be honest, but mm. you can plug in whatever, um, you know, USB mics you want, and they will all be listed then alongside, you know, the um, system ones. So thank you. That's great. So will you try and keep everything in zoom then arnie yeah i'm asking them to all download it um because yeah. it's just the the view the, the the field of view is better for a start yes and i use it with my imac so i can kind of see things more or less see me the whole instrument i can yeah. see them you know so it works quite well and it doesn't take but, long to download it either i mean some somebody wanted to download it in advance of the meeting but really it's very quick it, yeah, it's like almost yeah. like just a few seconds. Yeah. It's not a big package, a big um, um, worrying piece of uh, um, software to download. Yeah. Yeah. So yesterday I gave three bass lessons and one drum lesson, actually, because um, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, because uh, at the conservatory we get to play with drummers. Um, and the bass teachers get three lessons with the first and second year drummers a year. And one of them wanted a lesson yesterday. And we just, you kind of have to think out of the box a bit. So it was just guided listening. We just took a track and we went through it. He got the track up on YouTube. I got the track up. And we went through and we talked about what was happening between the bass and the drums. So, and he found it very useful. Um, you know, so you kind of, if you think outside the box a bit and kind of get away from your conventional mm. system of teaching. Not that mm. I have one. Uh, uh, it's quite useful. Yeah, but I think this, you know, you, you feel very connected. I haven't met any of you in real life, but I feel I've got a sense of, of uh, connection with you all now, albeit, albeit virtually. Now, Chris, I can't leave you out. Last but not least, go on and mute yourself and tell us how you're doing. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hey. Uh, Hi. Yeah, I'm I, uh, I do quite a lot of teaching anyway, and I've been doing um, a few lessons this week, uh, and some of them on FaceTime, some of them on Zoom, and yeah, Zoom's been great, it's the first time I've used it, and thanks very much for doing this also, by the way. Um, but something about Zoom that I have found, I found it to generally be, the signal seems to be more reliable than FaceTime, but the the audio didn't seem as good. Maybe, maybe doing that thing with an extra mic that Arnie suggested would help. Would help that. I just found that it clicked more. Than it 
but it cuts off the front end of the note quite a lot of the time. I don't know if anyone else has had that, if you're playing uh, on guitar anyway. And I noticed it a bit when Derek just played piano there, that the beginning of each note seems to be sort of slightly clipped. Does anyone else hear that? I, I think I know why that might be. Tony. Uh, if you go to the settings again, Chris, and you, and yeah. if you go to settings, go down to microphone. Yeah. You see it says uh, automatically adjust microphone volume. If you uncheck that box, then you can do it yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I think what's happening there is it's putting some compression in or something. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. It's like yeah. it's really, really compressed. Yeah. yeah. So if, okay. if you if you just adjust it manually, then that might solve that oh. problem. So you well, this one here then. Show yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. uncheck that. Okay. And then. Okay. Um, and then you can use the slider just to adjust the, the volume. Because they were both, that was on full actually. I don't know if yeah. that's uh, going to mm. make a difference. Okay, that's well, a good Out one. of interest, okay. did anyone else notice when Chris started speaking, he was a lot quieter and then he suddenly got louder? And you, yeah. I don't think you touched anything, did you, Chris? He always does that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what I was thinking was, there's no way a system like this is going to work without compressors, sidechain limiters, all that kind of business going on in the background, of which we have very little control. So that might help. That's my first thought. There's no way that this system hasn't been designed without all that kind of automatic compression or sidechain limiting. You know that thing with the, when a disc jockey speaks and the track suddenly gets a lot quieter? So yeah. that's mm -hmm. sidechain limiting. So the compressor works, but not on the DJ's vocal, but on the music that's in the background. Same way why bass drums make the rest of the music pump in, prop, in contemporary house music. Uh, the modern music, my lud, that people listen <laughs> to, uh, yeah. but I don't. Uh, but I'm, I've heard the compression. Anyway, just a, a, a sort of technical thing. So I think that might be the answer around it because that's the problem I'm hearing. Mm. Mm. The thing is, the musicians, uh, uh, you're all so important. It's so important that the sound is perfect. So it must be really frustrating for you with this and the video quality is excellent really isn't it when you consider but mm -hmm. it's the sound sorry in the advanced settings they've got some like they've got suppressed persistent background noise suppressed intermittent background and loads of things are on auto echo cancellation where's this joe it's in the if you go press where you've got your mute button if you go into the yeah. arrow opposite that next to that uh -huh. and then you've got audio settings at the bottom uh-huh Click on that, and then you've got advanced. So there's. Yeah, I'm just, oh um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just sharing my screen with you. I mean, I oh, wouldn't yeah, want to touch those. I wouldn't want to touch those because I don't really know what they mean. I've got no idea. Yes. I want to touch all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mine are all set to auto because I would. And um, yeah, uh, what's this? Show in meeting option to enable original sound from microphone. I've not tipped that because I don't know what that means. Mm. You know, you almost, what you need to do, maybe two of you get together and do a chord and, and do a, t a fair test yeah. on a piece of music or I don't know, a few bars and do different things with each of it. Mm. You know? Yeah. To get the best I, I, one, I just had one more question about scheduling meetings. Scheduling. Uh, yeah, yeah, because um, cause the teaching I did yesterday, yeah. I ended up not knowing how to do that. I just sort of set up the meeting and then invited the people one by one, yeah. which seemed to work. But is it better to schedule it? I mean, I guess then you can do it way in advance. But um, how, how, do you, how do you do it? Sorry. Uh, do you know what I would do exactly? Um, um, I, would, I would schedule. So I would yeah. go to zoom.us, your account online. Uh, and you know, so where all your settings are, the all the settings, not the little mini settings, everything is here. And I'd go to meetings and I'd um, schedule, well, you can see a list of all your meetings planned, the last one for today, schedule a meeting, um, you know, set up a description, how long it's gonna be, if it's recurring, if it's once a week, that'll save you time. It'll just be all showing in the list of all meetings coming up each week. Um, you know, are you going to use a password, Joanna? There we are. You can put a password in. Do you want the video to be on the host automatically when you go in? Same with the participants. So you can do all of the settings once and it will remember them. 
for the next slide. Do you want people to connect by computer audio? Probably that. I've got both ticked, but there we are. Um, this is important. Mute participants on entry. If it's one to one, you're not going to do that. But if it's like 10, you might want to do that. You can have a waiting room. I've done that before now. So I can get everything ready, get all my uh, files set up. And then people wait in a waiting room. I didn't do that with you. I allowed you to come straight in. Uh, but that's another option. Um, record the meeting automatically. Somebody asked, how do you record? Well, you can have them all recording automatically if you've forgotten to do it. So yeah, um, literally, there's so many settings here. So ye yesterday I did, I did this like, what's normally a three hour class at Guildhall, yeah. but I did it as, as one to one tutorials for like 25 minutes each. So in that case, would you, would you make that as just one meeting, but then they can, each one of them can come and join in briefly? Yeah, okay, what would I do? Okay, I'm gonna do something similar because I'm gonna to have to do tutorials now with my, some of my students. So I might say, I might say, right, this is our classroom time, one until three o'clock. This is your time mm. slot, don't come before then. Mm. Um, um, this is your time slot, and then one person leaves the meeting, and the other person pops in at their agreed time. Okay, so you just set it up as one meeting, yeah. give them all the code, or them their specific time within that. Okay, yeah. fine. Okay, that's, yeah. that's that, that makes, makes it so much easier. You've got the meeting up, and I'm, I'm going to close anything down, or it's just up there. Makes yeah. sense. Great. Right. Thank you. Um, although I did today, um, my meeting, I, ha I was running a meeting, just I was doing some testing, then I went outside and did something, and I came back and it had closed the meeting down. It'd be, I'd been inactive for a period of time, about 40 minutes, I think it was. But that wouldn't apply to you because you're going to have one after another. Yeah. Great. Great. Out yeah. of interest, you, uh, you, this has gone on for more than 40 minutes now. So yeah. we haven't been kicked off. Have you got a paid account then? I have, I decided to get a paid account. I feel that um, there's so many people I can help with this. <laughs> uh, okay, but what, what would normally happen at the 40 minutes? Would we just be kicked oh, off? Oh, gosh, off the very minutes? first time I, I did it, um, when I didn't have a paid account, it came up and it um, said, you're coming close, no, 10 minutes before, it said you're coming uh, towards the end of your time limit. So it warned me. It's like last, kiss, last, last drink up at the bar, that kind of thing, and then it will stop. But you can just immediately join again and have another 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Just I'm just wondering, time. I'm wondering how long it's going to be after this whole coronavirus thing, when they're going to start charging everybody, because it seems to be like too much, too good to be true. Call me yeah, a cynic. I, I, I mean, I, I hope that they won't. I don't think they will in the crisis, but going forward, mm. maybe they will. Because this is a lifeline for so many people. Yeah, it's amazing. Isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, I'm sort of isolated here, home alone, and and yeah, I've got I've got a son in Japan, another one in Trinidad. I'm going to a a virtual um, kind of rave tonight. <laughs> There's wow. this kind of thing that's happening, um, with great music and <coughs> DJs, the best DJs in the world. So, so you know, would I have done that before? No. <coughs> It's marvellous, but I'm just saying that there's different ways of kind of doing things. Uh, so, does anyone want to, well, first of all, ask any other questions, or does anyone, would anyone like to try and test some things out while we're here? I think I'll stop recording now, because mm -hmm. um, I think we've done the, the meaty bit, but I'm going to, you know, say that we'll, we'll stay.